was super successful. I mean, <clears throat> when I look at things that I wanted in my life, and that was a principle that I learned, find somebody that has what you want, do what they do, and you can have what they have. And I learned that principle, and I'm going, who do I know that has, like, the ultimate life? And I'm going, my buddy's father has that life. Okay, now what, what did I see that you would think was, was, was magic here? Number one, they had a great marriage. I mean, they were happy, and life was great, and they had three kids, and they got along real well. Everybody, you know, interacted perfectly. I spent the night at their house. Things felt, always felt good. They lived in, in, a, in a magical home. The chemistry was right. They lived on acreage with the Kubota tractor and the grassy green fields and the white picket fence. They had an outbuilding with boats and, and jet skis and four-wheelers and motorcycles and then five more bays, you know, antique cars that were being restored, fast cars, luxury cars. And I'm going, wow, this is great. They went on vacations. They traveled the world together. They went everywhere and did things together. And I thought, someday, that's what I want to experience. And so I said to myself, I'm going to have a conversation with this guy's dad. And we did. We went together. And I said, I said, Dr. Hasenow, that's his name, Dr. Hasenow, his name is Bruce Hasenow. Never forget it. Lovely guy. Talked to him all the time. And he goes, uh, uh, what can I do for you guys? And I said, you know what? I read this principle, and I want to find out if it's true. Will you help me get what you've got? And he said, yes. There's only one challenge. What is it? He goes, you think you know what I do? I can guarantee you you don't. And I said, no, I, I mean, I, I watch you. You go to work, you're a dentist, I, 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 I can do that. And he goes, you don't want to do that. He said, here's why you don't want to do that. I trade time for money. I trade time for money. I sit in a chair every day, and I look over people's mouths, and I do something here. It's very tedious. My fingers don't feel good anymore. I don't like the way I feel. It's non-social. They're not talking. I'm not talking. It's a very lonely world. And the moment I stop doing this is the moment my income stops. And I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. So I said, what are you up to? And he goes, I'll be retired next year. I said, so dentistry has been that good for you? He goes, no, quite the contrary. I realized not long after I became a dentist that it was really a facade that I could be successful in dentistry. He goes, there's three things that you need to have. Number one, he said, in order to be free, you have to have three things working for you simultaneously. Number one, he said, there's no negotiation. This is not open for discussion. He said, Scott, you must feel good. If you don't feel good, and I'm talking about physical feel good, emotional feel good, something that you, you it's, it's got, it's got pain associated. The opposite of pain is feeling good. So he said, you have to feel good. You have to feel good here. You have to feel good here. And you have to feel good here. If you don't feel good, you're not going to be free. And I said, OK, what's number two? He said, number two is you must control your time. I said, what do you mean? And he goes, the biggest asset you will ever own in your life is your time. The biggest asset you'll ever own in your life is your time. He said, thank you for telling me all the things and reminding me of the, of the physical, tangible assets that you see. He said, what you don't see that I'm completely void, devoid, bankrupt in is time. He said, I don't own my time. My phone rings. A patient has a toothache. I have to run down and deal with it. If I want to make more money, I have to take in more patients and give up a Friday night or a Saturday or even come in after I go to church. That's what I'd have to do. So he said, there's a limit on my income. And he says, you have to control your time. He says, never negotiate your time. He said, it's a non-negotiable in life. There's two types of people in this world, he said. One person owns their time and the other person doesn't. He said, it's rare when you find the person owns their time. 2% of the people do that. That means that everybody you're typically or likely to model from, they don't own their time. Therefore, they're not free. Therefore, don't do what they do. I thought, wow, that's pretty powerful. Number three is he said, you must have residual income. He said, this is the definition of residual. Residual is you do something one time and you get paid on it forever. Versus, go trade out your time for money, and 
and get paid. Go trade out more time, get paid. Or trade out more time and get paid. He said, that's not residual. So he said, you have to have residual income. What do I do if it's not dentistry? And he says, you need to be a professional network marketer. Not a network marketer. You have to be a professional network marketer. And I said, well, how do I do that? I'm a 17-year-old kid. I don't turn 18 for a long time. I'm not, I'm not able to legally go out and do anything. I said, where do I go to school? What kind of, he goes, no, 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 no. He said, this is something that you'll pay for with your time. You're going to give up some time to learn. And he said, I would suggest, if this makes sense to you, that you follow me tonight and you come here your first lesson in success and learn these principles. And he said, then we'll have a conversation. So I went with him that night with my friend Corey, who was his son, and we went and sat in on his meeting. And that meeting, at 17 years old, it did something to my mind. It programmed me for the first time, if you will, this, this word will freak you out, I'm going to say it anyways. Take it in the spirit it's intended. I became brainwashed in that moment to a new paradigm shift. And as I say that, you're, you're thinking, okay, isn't like brainwashing negative? Newsflash, you're already brainwashed. You've been brainwashed from the moment you came out of the womb for something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your whole life is because you're brainwashed. Where you are in this moment is because you're brainwashed. Let's change the word out to make you feel better. Just the synonym, you're programmed. You already have belief systems. That's brainwashing. So whatever you think is why you are here in this moment right now. Follow? Yep. yep. So you can choose to become programmed by something else. You can choose to clean your brain. So I like to think of brainwashing as let's just get rid of all the nasty negative thoughts and process and belief systems. Let's clean all that out. And let's put new ones inside so you can go through life without being way down with all this baggage from stuff in the past. Wouldn't that feel really good? Yeah, it would feel great. So this is what's going on. And since I made a decision, so back to mindset, decisions, and behavior. Since I made a decision right then, here's what happened. I walked out of there saying, this is amazing. I can do it, and I have support. This is amazing, I can do it, and I have support. If you have the belief that what you're doing is amazing, and you have someone that will help you, then you're unstoppable. And I had the belief that I could do it. And from that day forward, I went from there into college with a new mindset, I had a belief system, and my behaviors were amazing. Because what I thought is what I, what I acted out in my life. And instead of going into college going, okay, this is a party, and I got all these girls around me, and I've got sports to delve into, and I'll just get a couple of decent grades just to get by. No, I went to college with a different mindset. I didn't go there to get a piece of paper and say, look at this awesome frame around my piece of paper, and I think you should be impressed because of where I went to school, and see, isn't this awesome? I, have a I didn't do that. I could have cared less about that. What I did care about is that I went to school for the opportunity to communicate and socialize and develop my people skills, number one, and to learn specific things that I was passionate about. For example, I learned as a kid that a distant relative of mine was Chuck Yeager. You know the guy that broke the sound barrier? He wasn't the first guy to break the sound barrier. He was what? What, what does anybody remember about Chuck Yeager? What was he first at doing? He was the first person to live and tell about breaking the sound barrier. Other people had broken the sound barrier. They just all died in the process. Because here's what happened. This is a great metaphor. If you don't remember anything, remember this. Everyone, and there were numerous people that went before him, they got into these fast planes, and they would fly faster and faster and faster. And what would happen is they'd start to feel their planes vibrate and they start shaking, I mean, just violently shaking. And what would happen is, in, is they would all pull back. They would all pull back on the power when they started to feel the uncertainty and the vibration and the violence of the experience, they pulled back. And in the moment of pulling back, their airplanes exploded because it stayed in the moment of violent turbulence. And the turbulence was so indescribable that it literally exploded the airplanes and they disintegrated. Boom! 
and they, they erupted, and they died. And then another person would look at that and go, I'm going to give that a try. <laughs> and for the life of me, I have no idea why so many people went and did the same thing over and over and over again, and death, death, death. Everybody was done. They hit it, and it was like, this is horrible, and they pull back, and then bang, they'd explode. And one day, Chuck Yeager goes, hmm, why is it that these guys keep pulling back? Maybe I need to give it all I've got and like thrust through it. And so that was his idea. And everybody thought he was crazy. And he goes, live or die, I am going to push through this deal. And so he got up there faster, 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 700 and some miles an hour. And here came the vibrations. Ooh, and he was shaking down. He's like, okay, I can see why these guys are pulling back. This is awful. And then bang, he firewalled the throttle and gave it everything he had. And boom. The sound barrier, it, it went off, it erupted, there was a massive explosion, and people thought he died. It was the sound of him actually pushing through it, and then everything went smooth. Boom! Instantaneously. No more violence, no more vibration, no more incredible shaking. It was just smooth as silk. And he realized that he had broken through that sound barrier, left it in the dust, and everything changed. Isn't it interesting how we go through life? And the same exact thing happens. We face an obstacle. We face a hurdle. We have that violent turbulence going on all around us, and it's uncomfortable. And instead of pushing through it, we go, oh, we pull back, and we, like, give up. And then your life explodes. Sometimes it's just a matter of pressing through the things that are stopping you, that are your hurdles, that are in your way. If all of a sudden the fire alarm went off, and there was, there was a massive fire where these guys are standing in the doorway back here, and it was blocking us in and sealing us, here's what some people would do. We'd walk up to it really slowly, like, oh, man, this is really intense, and we'd start to back off like this. And then the pressure, the, the issues going on, it would come in and consume us, and ultimately we'd die of asphyxiation, or we felt the pain, probably. Here's what we really should do. We should move like lightning right through that fire, because if you went through that quickly, you wouldn't even get burned. You wouldn't even feel it. Have you ever put out a flame? You lick your fingers and put out the flame? Yeah. Or if you've taken your finger and you've moved it through the flame, you notice that you don't get burned. If you lick your finger, your finger turns black and you still don't feel the pain. Yeah, that's the same thing in life. If you feel the pressure, you're on the right track. It's another valuable lesson I learned in life. If you feel the pressure, if you feel the pain in your life or the circumstance, and you push through it, you get on the other side of it as quickly as possible. Most people tiptoe through the tulips of their pain. They're like, oh, this is horrible. Every inch of me is in horrible disarray, and I don't know how people live through this. It's because you're wallowing in your stuff. Just Get out of your stuff. Get through your stuff as quickly as possible and find the positive, just like I did when I was a kid and my home was in disarray. To this day, my parents are my best friends. They're happily remarried. Life is good. They spend time together. They, they hang out. They do stuff together. And that's success, is it not? That's success. Everybody deserves to be happy, including you, including me. So here's the thing. There's a lot of vehicles in this world that you can choose to find peace, joy, and happiness. Let me write these words down. Everybody here, I've given you things in three, here are four things. You want peace, you want joy, and they all mean something different, and you want happiness. Okay, so I've given you three blocks of three things tonight. If you can find three, excuse me, if you can find peace, joy, and happiness at the end of your day with everything you've got going on, then life is good. You ever heard that slogan before, life is good? Yeah, people wear it, it's on hats, it's on t-shirts, life is good. So here's how life was good for me. I became a network marketing professional, starting it. I wasn't a professional on day one, I committed to becoming one. And by the time I got through college, check this out, you're gonna love this, oh man. I am on a roll. <laughs> how many people in here are going to school right now? Let me see your hands, if you're going to school right now. So, wow, okay, half a dozen of you or so, cool. All right, everybody got this down? Okay, everybody good? Yeah. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Here's what a typical student will do. Now, 
What you gotta know is I have three kids. I'm just gonna tell you a story about my oldest one. He's 15 years old. He just became a freshman. So my oldest son is a freshman. And three months ago, he came to me and he goes, Dad, I gotta talk to you. I've like been hearing you do these meetings for years now, and all I know is that you give the most incredible inspiration. You like change people's lives, Dad. He goes, you're changing my life. And the reason that we're free is because of what you do. I want to do what you, Dad, I want to be like you. And I mean, you talk about your heart melting. That was pretty amazing. He said, I don't want him to do what I do because I want him to do it. I want him to do what I do because he wants to do it. And it was his idea. He's coming to me. He's going, someday I want to be free just like you and Mom. Because I know why we have the lifestyle we have. And I want that lifestyle. And I know that if I don't do what you do, I'm scared half to death as a kid to go out there and figure out how this time for money stuff. He goes, I want to build it. I want to build it hard. Can I do it as a kid? I go, yeah, you're two years younger than me when I started. Let's go. The difference is I didn't have a role model in the household to, to mentor this stuff to, and you do. You know, he doesn't have to pay for rent. He doesn't have to pay for food. He doesn't have to buy his clothes. He doesn't have to pay his cell phone bill. He doesn't have to pay the electricity. He doesn't have to pay the tuition for his private education. We do. So the benefit of being a, a, a person that still lives at home is you can take advantage of the fact that you don't have the pressures of all this life stuff going on and go build it. I do meetings right now called Cash for College. It's intentionally for high school kids and younger and the parents of high school kids and younger and even early age college students that still have two, three, four years to go. Here's why. Here's the moral of the story. What they're up against, I know this to be a fact because this is the way it was for me in 1990 when I went to college. My first year was 1990. I'm 43 years old right now. And this is what happened. I went to a school where the tuition was close to $25,000 a year. Okay, so that's a lot of money. I get that. I get that it's a lot of money. And it doesn't matter how much it is, most kids can end up showing a support system to take out student loans, true or false? True. So if you are not able to afford the college that you go to, you can take out a student loan, and they make it easy. I mean, if you want a student loan badly enough, they want you there badly enough, and the interest rate that they earn on you is so exorbitant, and there's no way to bankrupt it. You have to pay these loans. It's like a win-win every which way. They, they hope you don't pay cash. They want to finance you so they can get twice as much out of you by the time you finish paying interest and you think you've got a good deal? Let me tell you something. The number one reason people file bankruptcy is medical bills and credit card debt. The average household in America has five credit cards with a balance of $27,000 and they're making minimum payments from month to month and they don't pay those balances off. And the banks make bank. The banks make bank. You want you think it's checking and savings accounts is how banks stay afloat? No. It's things that have interest associated with it. And today, as big as the national debt is on credit cards, the national debt on student loans makes credit cards look silly. The national debt of student loans makes credit cards look silly. It's like kindergarten versus college. It's abhorring. You see, they're a business, too. Everything has to have something for sale. True or false, David? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm asking you because you're, I know you're a business man. Yeah. So every, everything is for sale. Everybody has something for sale. Your company has something for sale. You're for sale. Are you not for sale? If you're hired out and you have a job, you sold yourself. Period. So if you were to tell me, I don't know if I'm very good at sales, if somebody hired you, you're good at sales. Because there's a lot of competition out there. If you haven't noticed, there's a lot of competition. For every job, there's 100 people that want it. And somehow, you want out. Here's another sale. It's a little comical. However, somehow it worked itself out. You know how there's like billions of little sperm cells that flow through the cavity there? <laughs> and the the egg? Somehow, you won. <laughs> I'm just saying that was a pretty big sale job. So somehow all the other guys aside, you said, back off, sucker. <laughs> and you found your way. So sorry for the visual. <laughs> I'm just saying. So 
25,000. We're going to call this your freshman year. Didn't you guys need to laugh like that? This <laughs> life can get so serious. Sometimes you just have to find a way to laugh. Okay. I talk a lot about bodily parts because we all have them. And, and they're kind of funny the way they operate. It's really, it's really an interesting experience. So we have a freshman year. Was that? Yeah? Okay, good. I'll add to it. We'll keep it going. $25,000, you are in debt after your freshman year. And you go, shoot, I think I need to be a sophomore in this deal. I just love being $25,000 in debt. Let's go become a sophomore. Do you know what sophomore means? Sophomore is two words. Sophomore is wise moron. <laughs> so by the time you become a sophomore, you're now a wise moron. And you take out another $25,000, and then you decide you're going to be a junior. And so now you go take out another $25,000. You're now $75,000. It's okay. You don't feel it yet. It has, they haven't notified you of all the debt you're taking on. They're letting you go with it because you're, you're in for it. And now you decide it's time to finish up. Let's get this deal over with. You're a senior. You take out the final $25,000. you are now $100,000 in debt. Here's the challenge to you. You have absolutely no guarantee that when you're coming out of there that you're going to get a job. You have no guarantee whatsoever. As a matter of fact, here's a statistic. This is from the University of Northern Colorado. This is their statistic. And everybody knows the University of Northern Colorado? UNC Bears? Okay. They put out a statistic that showed that by the time you finish college, 80 plus percent of their college graduates, 80 plus percent of their college graduates were not able to find jobs fast enough, so they went home and moved in with mom and dad. That's pretty tough stuff right there. And then the disillusionment sets in. Everyone's disillusioned. Maybe this thing wasn't such a great idea. I've got the, and by the way, they, whoever they are, they don't care whether you have a job or not. Guess what's starting the moment you're done with school? Okay. Student loans. Student loans are kicking in. What's that? Six months after you graduate. Six months after you graduate. Thank you. So six months after you graduate, those student loans are kicking in. And let me tell you, you're going to feel it. Okay? Watch this. If you were to embark on your professional network marketing career, I'm going to show you how simple this is in a second. This is going to go fast. It's important that you get the foundation here. If you came in here, I can tell you this conservatively, in my opinion, if you did what I do, if you do what we do, if you do what we teach, and you stay in the lane and you follow the system, I believe conservatively, this is conservative, like super silly. This is someone who maybe, you know, a couple hours a week is, is looking at this from a part time perspective. I think you'd make 10 grand your first year in the business. I think your second year, Playing conservative, you're going to double it. 20000 How much have you made so far? Three? 30000 right? So $30,000 compared to how much debt are you in over here? You're $50,000 in debt. Over here, you've made thirty grand. So the difference is 20000 correct? Yep. Okay, now watch this. Over here, your third year, you're going to double it again. 40,000. How much are you in debt over here? 75,000. 75, How much have you made? 70,000, uh, 70, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, watch this. Here, you're going to double it again. How much have you made? 150. How much? 150. 150. How much are you in debt over here? How much did you net over here after you paid off your loans? 50,000. You walk out of school with $50,000 in your bank account, you owe no money, you have no stress, and oh, P.S., by the way, the next year you come out of school, that's year number five. Some people, by the way, they take the victory lap. <laughs> <laughs> because they're not done, so it's called BL. I didn't make it very good either. So you have a victory lap. That's the victory lap. Well, you're doing the victory lap. By the way, is the victory lap free? No. No, no. so let's just say if you take the victory lap, you're now in for another 25 grand. You can change the number down here. And oh, by the way, I think you'll double it again. $160,000. How much have you made? A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> $310,000. How much are you in debt over here? $125,000. What's the difference? 
Yes. Wow. <laughs> About 185,000 in your bank account. Guys, these are kids. How do I know this happens? Because I followed this plan when I went to school. That's how I know that this happens. Here's what I did. In the daytime, just like you would do, I went and sat in the classrooms and I learned about aeronautics. I learned about mathematics. I learned about uh, you know, English and I learned about history and I took business law courses and I did accounting and management. I took all the normal classes and at nighttime, I took the philosophy of this thinking, the mindset and uh, the belief systems and the behaviors and at night, I came in and used a plan. Of course, this was pre-technology. There was no cell phones. There was no Apple anything. There was no, there was nothing. We had chalkboards. And I don't mean to make my sound sound prehistoric. I'm not. Um, it's just that's, it, technology has grown a lot very quickly. We had a chalkboard. And like Dave said, I drew circles and shapes and stick figure people. And I said, here's you, here's them, and here's what's going to happen. And I did this night after night for an hour. And it started with a couple students, and pretty soon, more students were coming in, and more students were coming in, and more students were coming in, and we moved to bigger lecture halls, and pretty soon, we had the theater-style seating. It was sloped, and we had to go in. It was called Chan Shan Hall, and this place was packed with students of 18 to 22 years old. Why were they there? Because they said, I don't want to be broke when I get out of this deal. And I want to make money right now. I want to be able to afford to go on a date. I don't want to have to ask mom and dad, can you send me 200 bucks again? Or I got a speeding ticket or a parking ticket on campus. That's really popular, by the way. Mom, yeah. dad, I got a $40 parking ticket. Can you come over here and deal with this? No. Let's grow up. We can learn how to handle this. And so I did my own method of social media back there, even though we didn't have like the Twitter and the Facebook and everything. Here was our method of social media. Hey, you want to pay cash for college, or you don't want to do that debt thing? You want to pay cash? Great. We're going to be meeting in Chan Shan Hall tonight at 7 o'clock. Do me a favor and go find five people that want to pay cash, too. Be there. Can I count on you to be there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you can find five people, you'd say, I don't know what's up. All I know is that there's this guy that's saying that we can pay cash for college, and we're going to meet at 7 p.m. in this lecture hall. And they came. Remember the whole movie, Field of Dreams, build it and they will come? Yeah. We built it, and baby, did they come. Because here's what happened. I'll never forget. I almost wet myself. <laughs> I was standing in the front of the room. Standing in the front of the room. And I was talking. And I remember like, the slope theater style seating. And all of a sudden, I see one of my business professors wow. walk in on the upper deck catwalk. And he stood at the top and he went like this. It was like a horror movie. <laughs> and he looked down. And I was looking up. And I was like, oh, no. And like, how did he find out? And what had happened is somebody had gone and tipped off the professor and said, you got to see this. Why aren't we teaching this in school? And he came down the center aisle. And I thought he was going to march right down here and say, you are kicked out of this school. This is blasphemy. And, and I saw that movie playing in my head, and that's not what he did. He came down, he took a beeline, and went about four seats in on a certain row, and he sat down. And somehow I pulled it together and thought, well, I guess I'll keep going. And so I kept talking, I drew another circle, and I said something. And when we were done, he came down, he goes, that was amazing. Where did you learn that? How did you know how to do this? Is this working? I'm going, uh, I'm not going to tell you his name. Uh, yeah, Mr. So-and-so, as you can see, it's working pretty good. There's a, there's a lot of people here tonight. He goes, this is the most packed class on campus. There is no class on campus that has that many students in. What are you doing? And, and, and you know what? He joined the business. And by the time I was done with that school, there were like six of my business professors in the program, in the program. And they were showing up to meetings at night, and they were bringing people. And suddenly when we went from the 18 to the 22-year-olds. Suddenly we were in the 40 and 50-year-old category because that was their generation. And they were recruiting people that had been working for 20 years in the big boy and girl world, and they were broke or dead broke. You see, 
those professors taught me a valuable lesson. I learned some things from them that were so valuable, it's been priceless to me. Sometimes we look for uh, circumstances we're like, what do we do? And sometimes the question is, what do we not do? What do we not do? I learned a lot about what not to do. I learned some things about what to do. When I put all those together, magic occurred. Here I am 26 years later. I've been virtually retired since the age of 25. Hello. Remember Ben Stein and Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Hello. Remember that line? Some of you are old enough to remember that line. It was awesome. It was phenomenal. And so people might have questioned because they weren't familiar with, or they might have laughed because they thought it was silly and it didn't involve like the deepest levels of intelligence and, and intellectual thinking and things that required IQs. No, it was the ability to smile. It was the ability to laugh, to make people feel good, to bring out the best out of people, to learn how to invite and ask people if they wanted to step from mediocrity into a whole world of extraordinary. And that's all I look for, guys, for the last 26 years is people that were willing to be transported from here to here. Some will, some won't, so what? Next. That's just a great mentality. It's a great theory. Some will, some won't, so what? Next. And I just keep moving on. And now today, all over the world, the Pitcock family and the Fardulis family, we go into countries together. We're going to Barbados next week. What are we going to do there? We're opening up countries. We're bringing hope to the hopeless. It's the number one amputation capital in the world. It's a free medical system. They hack it off. That's their method of dealing with stuff. So the rest of the story goes like this. Three years ago, something horrible did happen. Although, at the end of the day, somehow I found out how to find the positive in it. So something horrible happened, I found the positive in it. Three years ago, I lost my health. I had three different diagnoses that were given to me. At the end of the day, without getting into all the medical jargon, the bottom line was, is somebody thought I had 30 days to live. How would you feel if you were told that you had 30 days to live? How would you feel? How would you feel? Angry? What else? Sad? What else? Why? Why? Yeah, like, why me? <clears throat> of all the people, why me? What else? Scared. Scared. Yeah, definitely. Wife, three kids. Life was good. Why now? Why was my time now? And so as I pondered this, the challenge was, is I wasn't so clear-minded because I was in tremendous pain. Now, I don't want to sound like a goody two-shoes. I'm just going to tell you that other than Two times in my life where I, had, I just experimented, I did the kid thing, and I, I wanted to know what it felt like to get inebriated. So I drank about twice, ever. And I felt it, and I said, it's not for me. This is not the world. That I, and I, and I, it's like I touched the stove and said, I don't want to play that fire. I don't want to do that game. And so I know what that feels like, and I backed off. So other than that, I've never done drugs, I've never smoked, I've never done anything intentionally harmful to my body other than eat ice cream and some candy bars. <laughs> and, um, and then here I found myself in this predicament, and I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you know what, we know you're in serious pain. We want to take the pain away from your body. Here's what we're going to do. And they started out with Vicodin, then they went to Percocet, then they went to Dilaudid, which, by the way, it's a lot of power hunting. That's powerful business right there. And, and then when I told them that that wasn't working anymore, they go, okay, you know, oh, it was so easy. Doc, my pain's off the chart. Still, oh, we're so sorry for you. Here, go down and fill that out. Maximum strength oxycodone. You talk about a world of something crazy. Oxycodone, that's the legal form of morphine. That is a drug as a drug can be. And it's on the street today. I watched at the health club the other day, maybe a 19 or a 20 year old came up to the counter and leaned into the gal behind the counter and they said, you don't happen to know anybody that would give you an easy dose of Oxycontin, did you? And I remember her looking and going, why did you ask me that question? Of all the people, why would you ask me to find you an illegal source of Oxycontin? That was her. So you see, it's a dark world. And it's the same kind of drug as the other drugs that are floating around out there. It's just legal. Crazy. 
And so I found myself on my first prescription of Oxycontin. And it said, take one in the morning and do not exceed the second one for maximum doses. And it was the maximum milligrams. And I did that, and then I did the afternoon one, and it was like it took me into La La Land. I was exited. I didn't even know what was up or down, and then I got used to it. And I thought, well, shoot, that pain is back again, so if one and two isn't working, maybe three and four will work better. And I started experimenting. Ultimately, here's my story. I figured out how to do this. That looks about right. I think that's what it's going to take today. And then, bam, I swallow those Oxycontins, and I take a trip to Mars. And it was a good way to check out. It was a horrible way to check out. And when your pain levels are that severe and your world is that dark, you're useless. You have nothing to offer. You're not any good to yourself. You're not any good to your spouse. You're not any good to your children. You're not any good to your friends. You don't show up. You disengage. And in my mind, I started rationalizing, I might as well not even be here. Those are dark thoughts. Pretty dark thoughts. Maybe I just shouldn't be here. And then you start thinking about how that's going to turn out. It's a dark world. And so I did what I knew I should have done a long time ago. I prayed. I said, God, dear God, I don't want to be here. I do not want to be here. It's going to take a miracle to get me out of this place right now because I don't have it. I don't have it. And nobody I know has it, whatever it is. I don't have it, and neither do they, whoever they are. And I prayed for that miracle. And you know what? I grew up watching a television show called Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. Marlon Perkins, he, uh, he was the guy on, on Animal Kingdom, and, and the first guy on television to bring exotic animals into your living room. I grew up tuning in those rabbit ears and turning the single dial, click, 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 until he tuned in, and I'd watch him do crazy stuff with animals. And he was eliminating diseases. Little did anybody know that 20 years after this show, he had come up and forward and sued the FDA seven times and won seven lawsuits, wrote a book called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. He's a doctor, by the way. And then that book has gone viral all over the world through social media, on DVDs, on CDs. On, it used to be on a cassette you know, back in the 90s. And there's like 200 million copies of that cassette, CD, book, program that's gone all over the world. You know why it's viral? It's because for the first time it gave people hope to sickness and disease and illness. And people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're looking for solutions outside this normal box we call the American Medical Association. And they want to, in other words, we wrote it on the board, feel good. People are sick and tired of being in pain. They just want to feel good. They want to feel good here, here, and here. We're sick and tired. And so he went after that market and said, nobody has to be sick and tired anymore. We've come up with 900 solutions. One solution for 900 diseases is how I meant to word that. One solution for 900 diseases. How did he know that? Because 26,000 or so autopsies later on both humans and animals, he concluded the same exact outcome. And it was that whether you're a pig or a giraffe, or a cow, or a horse, or a donkey, or a rhinoceros. You had to have 90 essential nutrients flooding through your body at all times in order to be healthy. I didn't have them flooding through my body, and my body broke down at 39 years old. It, it was destroyed, and it wasn't intentional. It was like, why me? And I thought I had done everything right to my ignorance and my naivete. I didn't know what I didn't know, and my parents didn't know what they didn't know, and I didn't grow up getting the right nutrients in my body, and my system wouldn't handle whatever decisions I made, and I, I became a victim. And so here's where the miracle came in. I knew who Dr. Wallach was. I thought I had a really good contact database, and I called everybody, and nobody could help me, and now the doctors wanted to cut me open and do things like take out a four of my vertebrae right here, because it was pinching off all my nerves. They want to take them out. Well, that's a little awkward, isn't it? <laughs> I've never seen anybody that survived without having vertebrae and still had their bodies function. So they go, it's okay. We're going to take a, an artificial block. It's new technology. We're going to stick it in there. 
And then we're going to fuse you together, and we'll figure out how to put these nerves back together, and you'll, you'll be better off than you are now. And I go, no, there's got to be a better way. So I took some more Oxycontin, bought some more time, and in the meantime, I, I, I prayed for this miracle, and I got one. Let's just say that I had the most amazing appointment. And by the way, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not intentionally offending anybody with my spiritual story here. Um, am I okay? Everybody okay? Yeah. All right, perfect. If you're not, just deal with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> still just deal with it. <laughs> I'm not sorry. So, I went into a coffee shop to meet my milkman. Okay, what do you know about your milkman? Nothing. They show up at 4 a.m. that morning. You're still sleeping. Somehow my milkman got a hold of my story, invited me to a coffee shop. I did one of these deals. I found my way there. I'm sitting there. In walks a stranger. Before I know it, I'm now talking and engaged with this complete stranger through my milkman, and that relationship led to, you don't look good. Got on the phone and said, Dr. Wallet, this is Tom Chenault. I have somebody sitting here right now that really needs to know who you are. And I was like, Dr. Wallet? Oh, man, that got me so emotional. I, I'd have a hard time explaining to you the feelings running through my body because I'm putting two and two together and I'm going, no way. That's a miracle. My milkman, the 4 a.m. guy that nobody knows, that got a hold of my story miraculously, like that's like about a 0% chance. He's not even in my caller ID. That's how much I know my milkman. You're not in here. I don't know you. So then... The stranger walks in, and he pairs us up, and we have a conversation with a complete stranger that I've never seen in my life, and he puts me on the phone with the guy that I grew up watching and respecting and loving and adoring that cured 900 diseases, and now he's talking to me. The word's erased. I can still see it. It's imprinted in my mind. The word was hope. I had hope for the first time, and I broke down like a little baby boy because I knew that there was a chance. And he said, you have two choices. He said, listen carefully, because this counts. You have two choices. If you keep doing what you're doing, you will be dead, in my opinion, in less than 30 days. Your body, for starters, will not handle that oxycodone little thing you've got going on. It's not going to work anymore. And not only that, it's not going to fix the diseases that you've got floating through your body. It's a Band-Aid, and you're getting worse and worse and worse by the moment and more rapidly, and you're approaching a deadline. He said, so keep doing that if you want less than 30 days to live. Or take my advice and follow it to a T, and I think you'll be well in 30 days. Now you choose, and tell me right now. And I said, I'll do anything you say. With tears flowing down my face, I'll do anything you say. Let's go. And I found myself on an airplane with my new mystery friend named Tom. And I'm now flying on an airline. I don't even know how well I remember the flight. We get to San Diego. We stay in the Grand Hyatt Hotel. I meet the Wallach family. I tour this incredible company called Longevity, and I started a protocol. And 21 days later, as I've documented it, it doesn't matter if it was 20 or 25, in 21 days, I felt amazing. I felt amazing. Like, someone flipped a switch, and I said, I feel so good. I feel extraordinary. I have, I have the feel good back. I have my life back. I have my wife back. I have my children. And when I say back, I just mean emotionally. I was engaging. I was present. I was in the moment. I could hear what they were saying. I could pay attention. I could give affirmation and converse, confirmation and say, that's great. I'm excited for you. Tell me more. Tell me another story. I wanted to be present. And I was. And I got that back. You know what? I'm grateful. And if you don't think that I'm on a mission or a crusade to save more lives like somebody saved mine, you'd be crazy. There's nothing more valuable on this planet I can think of doing than giving you hope and inspiring you to not be a corporate slave for the rest of your life and telling you, David, it's okay. I don't care if you've been around the block 25 times. I get where you're coming from. I can relate to you, ma'am. I understand what you're feeling and thinking. And I can appreciate the fact that you are where you are in your life. All I know is that together we can take this journey and we're going to get you from here to there. I just need to know what here is for you and what there looks like for you. And then the principles are the same. 
let's lock some arms and let's take this trip together. What do you say? And some people will say no. And some people will say yes. And whether they do or they don't, it's all the same to me. Because there's another person right around the corner that's begging and praying like I was three and a half years ago, wishing, wanting, desiring, and hoping on their knees that there's going to be a break in their life. That's the person I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the person that goes, well, I don't know. Really, while you're pondering that, I'm going to go save 10 more lives. I'll get back to you in a few. And I've done this. And you know what's interesting? The people that I came back full circle for, the time was right then. Sometimes you just need a wake-up call. Sometimes you need to feel a little bit more pain in your life before you're ready to take action. Sometimes the burn isn't hard enough. Am I being too preachy tonight? No. no. Excellent. You guys okay? Yeah. All right. Sometimes the burn isn't hard enough, and you need just a little bit more before you go, okay, this sucks. That's not comfortable anymore. See, there's something called brokeitis that's going on in the world. We've talked a lot about product tonight so far. I'm turning over the coin. We're on the other side of the coin now. So it's almost like a line has been drawn in the sand. If you didn't get that Dr. Wallach's an amazing man and that he's done some extraordinary stuff, I don't know what I missed. He saved my life. And he saves countless people's lives every year. Here's the top six reasons people die. Number one is heart disease. Number two is cancer. Number three is stroke. Number four is respiratory disease. Number five is Alzheimer's disease. And number six is diabetes. Those are the top six medical reasons why people stop breathing. Everything else is an accident. You're in a car accident, you fell off a cliff, you broke your neck skiing, those are accidents. Those were dark, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where those came from. <laughs> I did spend the night in my holiday in a car last night. <laughs> so those are the top six reasons why people die, except the unpublished one. There's an unpublished one that makes all of the rest of them look silly. You know what the real number one reason is people die? Malnutrition. Medical malpractice. Medical malpractice is the number one cause of death, and nobody knows that. They don't publish that statistic. Isn't that interesting? So back to the story. I got my life back, and I knew that this was a powerful, powerful vehicle, tool, horse to be riding. Sometimes you go through life and you wonder, why haven't I gotten my break? You think you're a great jockey? You might be. You've just been riding the wrong horse. It's time to find a new horse. If the horse you've been on isn't winning races, then for goodness sakes, it doesn't mean that you stink. It means the horse you're riding stinks. Get on a different horse. Get into a different car that has more horsepower. Do something. For goodness sakes, just stop doing what you've been doing that got you here. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, now, this is the vehicle. So here we go, you ready? Fasten up, because I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I've basically told you everything you need to know, and I'm just gonna put the little particulates together that'll wrap this up in a bow. Do you see the difference between column left and column B? Yep. Column, not the James. <laughs> <laughs> column left and column B, we're going column A and column B, left and right. You see the difference, yes. So the left side represents death, but it doesn't mean that the person on the right doesn't have to pay the same hundred grand or 125 grand. It means that they did something different while they're paying that. My 15-year-old son, I know for a fact that by the time he finishes high school, he's going to have some number between 100 grand and $250,000 in his bank account because of this program. Now I. Tell me, for, just tell me that you know some 18-year-old that's figured out how to make $100,000 to $250,000 by telling a good story. Tell me. Anybody? I know you can go do it in a dark world. And kids do it. I get that. I don't think they make that much money, though. That's a good way to do it, and it's the right way to do it. And here's what I know. Whether you do or don't, a lot of you, by the time you finish college, you'll make a decision. It might be called marriage. Could you imagine starting out in a marriage and you're him at 18 years old, thinking about it for the first time? And I hope he doesn't get married at 18. Let's just say, though, that they're thinking about it. And by the time he actually pulls the trigger someday to do that, having that kind of an income coming in, no stress financially, 
I asked a guy the other day, what's the key to a successful marriage? He goes, find a way to grow together. Find a way to grow together. See, I know that when I spend the days with my wife, that we're growing together. Let's start doing that. And let's get back to basics. And let's look at this presentation, because this is going to change your life. This is the story of our company. My razor won't work up there. Okay, good. That's our headquarters in San Diego. That's Oprah Winfrey. That's Mary Lou Henner, actress, celebrity apprentice. You might have heard her. She's really intelligent. That's an NBA all-star that retired after six years in the NBA, and then Dr. Wallach got a hold of him and healed him without doing anything to him from a surgery or drug standpoint. He played another eight years and got another $60 million. Do you think he loved Dr. Wallach? <laughs> yes, he does. That's Steve Hess. He's the physical trainer and conditioning coach for the Denver Nuggets. He's on our scientific medical and advisory board. These people don't end up here on accident unless they believe in something with all their heart and soul because their credibility is on the line. That guy's Mike Glenn. He played before the NBA. This is Drew Pearson. He's a wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys, retired and a Super Bowl champion with a ring just like that. That's what he's got on his fingers. That's Drew Pearson. This is our ticker symbol. If you want to follow us, that's how you can find out how we're growing. Here's how we're growing. I don't know if I'm within five or 10,000 or 10 million bucks for the year. Just go with an approximation here. Three years ago, when Dave and Barb and myself and my wife, Juliet, came on board with this company right after I got well. We did something like $38 million in sales for the year. $38 million. It's not huge. It's not small. $38 million is $38 million. We did that. Today, three years later, I don't know how many percentages it is, hundreds of percentages of growth. This year, we're going to finish the year, three years later, with about $130 million in sales. That's extraordinary. And the fact is, is that when we came on board, it was already a 15-year-old company. Something happened after we entered the scene here. And boom, in three years, we grew hundreds of percentages and went from 30 to 40 million to 130 million in sales. And guess what? We're going to keep growing. We've got a big story to tell. And there's a lot of people to be helping out there. Two sides of the same coin. We're going to help people feel good physically. And we're going to help people get their finances under control. Because right now, People don't have it figured out. How do we know that? You can read any number of books. Dave Ramsey, anybody know who he is? Mm -hmm. He puts out good statistics, and he says 98% of our population in this country is living paycheck to paycheck. I don't care whether that's, it's like he's off by 2%. If it's 80% living paycheck to paycheck, that's too many people. we got to save this population base. So we got those kinds of people. There's a good picture, a modern-day picture of Dr. Wallach. He's 75 years old, and this guy doesn't know slow or stop. <laughs> He's all over creation. I mean, literally, I'm going to be on a plane with him next Tuesday flying to Barbados, and when I have the privilege to travel with him and speak with him, it's like a dream come true to pick this guy's brain and to sit in his presence and hear what he has to say about saving lives. That's a pretty neat gift. So I take advantage of those opportunities. And, and, and here's some of the statistics. Look at this. He's been practicing medicine for decades. So this guy's not in his first rodeo. These are the people that he has surrounded himself with. That's a lot of people. Some of these people had a big impact on the health and medical industry. Big impact. And there's people here like this is one of my favorite guys. His name is Ben Fuchs, this guy right here. He lives in Colorado. I see him all the time. I hear him speak all the time. I love this man. He used to have some big title with the pharmacy industry, and he would say it like this. He wouldn't go into the laboratory where they make drugs without a respirator, a mask, a shield, and full bodyguard because of all the microscopic particles that are just floating in the air. He said, I wouldn't want them on my skin, number one organ on your body to absorb stuff, and I don't want them in my lungs. If he doesn't want to touch them or breathe them, what are we doing sucking them down by the billions of dollars a year? There's over 400 pharmaceutical drugs on the market, including oxycodone, and he will tell you, unless you're dealing with physical pain, there isn't one good reason why you should put one of those drugs into your system, not one. And if that's what he has to say, I think we need to pay attention. Here's our whole objective. You want to have a healthy body. You want to feel good. We're challenging you to take care of your body. And it could be way more than these. These are just some things to show you what we mean by taking care of your body. 
For goodness sakes, let's lose some weight. For goodness sakes, let's get fit. For goodness sakes, let's have some more energy. Have you noticed that people are sucking down monster energy drinks and five-hour energy and all this stuff to survive just to get from one end of the day to the other? It's like the norm. And if that's not a big deal, they're sucking down caffeinated coffee all day long. If you don't get your Starbucks, you think you're going to die. Like, how are you ever going to get through this day? So people go through Starbucks and Daz Bog and every other bog there is to get their cup of joe. Getting healthy is a really big deal. In general, these are pictures. I mean, Dave and I know these people. These are our friends. These are people. That guy right there, he's a captain for Delta Airlines. And uh, his life was saved. A great story. Here's what we're up against, friends, is this right here. As a nation, we spend more money than all other nations in the world combined, and we're not even close to being able to toot our own horn. 59 countries have figured out how to live longer than us. 40 countries have figured out a better way to give birth to live babies than the U.S. has. One in three Americans are now diabetic, and we have the number one blue ribbon first place prize for being the most obese nation in the world. You know, you know why we're overweight? It's because there's sugar in everything. Everything has sugar, and you're getting smart, so you read the labels, and now they're figuring out 200 different ways to create sugar when it's just sugar. So now that you know that sugar is not good for you, they've figured out something else to call it 200 times. And so there's sugar in everything. There's a movie out. If you've never seen it, watch the movie called Fed Up. If you've never seen it, go to Netflix, download this movie. You will never think about your health or the medical care system or politics that have your best or not best interest at heart or the people that are out there to protect. You will never think of it the same way. There's 600,000 items for consumption in the U.S. alone. Over 80% of those things are riddled with sugar beyond description. I'll give you an example. You get thirsty. What do you drink? Dr. Pepper. What? Dr. Pepper. Thank you. What else do you drink? Gatorade. Juice. Gatorade. Juice. Yeah. Honey. Juice. The answers are right. Mocha chinos, frappuccinos, caramel, blah, 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 macchioni, I don't even know what you call these things. All I know is that there is so much sugar in there. Here's one for you. Gatorade. 50 grams of sugar. Kids drink this stuff like it's going out of style because they see their superstars on TV doing it. And they're going, well, shoot, if Michael Jordan drinks Gatorade, everyone wants to be like, Mike, I better drink some Gatorade, too. It's the cool thing to do. Here's what's not so cool. 50 grams of sugar. Divide by four, that's how many sugar packets you're putting in your water. 50 divided by four is 12 and a half. Would you just say, I am so bloody thirsty today, I'm going to get myself a big glass of ice water first. I'm going to dump 12 sugar packets into this glass of ice water. That's what you do every time you decide to drink a Dr. Pepper or have a juice or have a coffee but it's all loaded with sugar like those mo mochaccinos and frappuccinos, all that kind of stuff. That's what you're doing. And then you wonder, why me? Your system isn't designed to do that. It would be like Dave's brand new Jaguar, which is awesome, an unbelievable car. I had the privilege of riding in it today for four hours. It is sweet. That car is bad to the bone. If you haven't seen it, it's parked out front. It's the only Jag out there that looks like his Jag. Nobody's driving that Jag. Nobody's driving that Jag. You have to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and did you hear what he said? I mean, it's like, oh, you know, people can laugh at me so what? Every month I make sixty to hundred thousand dollars a month. Go find somebody in this town called Johnson County that makes 60 grand a month. I dare you. Go, go find that person. I don't care how wealthy this, this county is. There isn't anybody making $100,000 a month. Tell me the job that pays 100 grand a month. Tell me. Somebody. Anybody. I mean, even even if you're an athlete playing for the, the uh, what's your team around here? The Kansas City Chiefs. I don't even care about <laughs> A professional ball player, those guys don't know what's next for them. They don't. There is no guarantee on that income. They get hurt tomorrow, their income's done. Just ask him. The list is long. The list is long of players. And the NFL stands for not for long. That's what the NFL is. <laughs> so, so, most obese nation in the world. This is what Dr. Wallach says. He says, it's not what you're eating that's killing you. It's what you're not eating. Remember those 90 essential nutrients? That's why we have this motto called 90 for life. This is how we deliver those 90 essential nutrients into your body. It's colloidal. Every disease is cellular-based. And so, 
You talked about cancer, for example, that's just unhealthy cells going rogue. Your cells are unhealthy whether they're called cancer or not, and they're going rogue. So you want to duplicate healthy cells or unhealthy cells? It's simple. This is going to penetrate your cells. It's going to make them healthy. When they split, that's what anti-aging means, healthy cells moving forward. So we have Beyond Tangy Tangerine. This right here, that's what I'm drinking in this bottle right here. This is Beyond Tangy Tangerine. 115 fruits and vegetables. 68 minerals, and 12 vitamins. Essential fatty acids, that's your brain nutrition. This is going to help you not have to have Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and memory loss and all those horrible things that happen to people when they get older. And then you've got Beyond Osteo FX Plus. Amongst other things, I had osteoporosis of the skull, degenerative bone disease, and osteoarthritis. Put that one on for size at 39 years old. It means your whole body is just like brittle and whittling away like, a, like an old person under a microscope. It looks like Swiss cheese. So beyond Osteo FX Plus, that rebuilds your bones, your tendons, your ligaments, and your joints. It brings density back again, makes you strong and whole, and that's a powerful thing. So that's how we deliver the 90 essential nutrients. You need to take those every day of your life, every day, 90 for how long? Life. Life. It's not 90 for today or 90 for next week until you feel good. It's 90 for the rest of your life. This is how we handle all 900 diseases. Dr. Wallach's a genius. Have you ever heard of the book series called Something for Dummies? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is like our Something for Dummies health program right here. All you have to do is look at the title and say, well, gee, and notice the, the, the common theme here is every one of these packs have the 90 essential nutrients plus an intensified amount of some of the ingredients that are in the 90 for Life program that deal with certain topics. Just intensify. So here's blood sugar. One in three people are diabetic or pre-diabetic. That's a lot of people that need to take that pack. Bone and joint pain, that's a big deal. And that can happen at any age. You don't have to be old to have bone and joint pain. I see guys that are young in the back of the room probably playing sports. Weight loss, eight out of 10 people are overweight. Eight out of 10, not two out of 10, eight out of 10 people need to lose weight. The athletic pack, here's what's amazing. Chance is in the back of the room. And he is like the most humble young man I might have ever met. This is a guy that is exploding his life. Amazing things are happening for him. He's believing his mindset is sharp as a tack. His belief systems are right on, right, just spot on. And his behaviors right now when he's exercising, it's extraordinary. He is, he is creating so much energy around him right now, he's like an F5 tornado. If you get too close of him, he's going to move you. If you get too close, you're going to be moved. You're going to feel the good force that's coming from that F5 tornado. Guys like Hayden Hutchinson right over here. These guys are moving mountains right now, and I'm proud of these guys. I am so proud. It reminds me of myself back when I was their age looking for a better way. And they're not sitting around playing victim where they're going, the time is now, my time is now, I'm stepping up, I'm stepping out, and I'm gonna bring as many people with me as I possibly can. That's what he's doing. And so I'm calling on Chance because, you know, I, if you have not seen him work out, you haven't seen him work out. This guy knows how to work out. He played baseball growing up through school like Hayden did. And then all of a sudden he gets a hankering that he's gonna go play football. Only that wasn't like his number one priority niche. All of a sudden, he just decides he's got the scholarship. He's going to go play baseball. And he says to his mom and dad, hey, I think I'm going to go for football. And they're like, what? You're a baseball player. He goes, I'm going for football. So he goes over here to K-State, which is like no small school, agreed? Yeah. And you ever heard of legendary coach Bill Snyder? Yeah. This guy is like the king of all coaches with a couple of other guys that have played, that have coached in the league. So Coach Snyder, whether you like the Wildcats or not, forget about the brand. Just think about the legend of players at that school that spit out one after another. These guys are rock stars. He walks over to Coach Phil Snyder and says, I'd like to give it a whirl. Would you let me come and practice with this team? Would you let me hang out with your players? I would like to give it my shot, my best shot. And he goes, sure, why not? He hangs out at football camp with these guys. And out of all the guys that show up to, to training camp that want to play football, Coach Snyder writes him a letter and says, you made it. You made the team. You made the cut. All these other guys are going home, not you. Welcome to the Wildcats. Number 28, Chance Pitcock. Played for K-State football. Played under legendary Coach Bill Snyder. 
And as I look at him, and I think of the dedication he has to his body every day, you know, don't pull a fast one on him. He's watching what he puts down in my life. Because you don't end up with a body like his by accident. And I don't, I'm not joking around with him. That guy is ripped. He is ripped. Like, you want to see a six-pack? He's got it. <laughs> He's like the real deal six-pack. You, you, you will not hang with him in a workout. You, you might build up to where he is. It's going to take you some time because he's done it over and over. Here's the scary thing. You'd look at Chance and you'd say, this guy, he's going to live the longest in this room. Now, he knows better, so he's not the example I'm giving you. I'm just telling you categorically, you'd look at him and say, he's going to live the longest. If we put a couch potato, so let's just, what, what's a couch potato? Someone that's pretty lethargic, somebody that sits around a lot, doesn't do a lot, very sedentary lifestyle, that's a couch potato. And then you've got a doctor, someone that's highly educated, that's supposed to know about health and nutrition and medical. And then you've got a fine-tuned athlete like Chance, only it's not going to be Chance because he knows better. You put all of them together and you say, which one lives the longest? And most people would say, well, shoot, the athlete lives the longest. I mean, they work out, they take care of themselves. The doctor is pretty intelligent, so they've got to be next. The couch potato, they don't deserve to live that long, so they're going to go first. And it's exactly the opposite. The couch potato lives the longest, the doctor lives second, and the athlete goes first. Why could the athlete go first? Because they've been taxing their body, they've been sweating out those 90 essential nutrients their entire life, drinking Gatorade, drinking water with no nutritional value, and they're depleting and dying faster. Average lifespan for an athlete like Chance is 58 years old-ish. The average lifespan for a doctor is early 60s. The average lifespan for a couch potato is like 75. Go figure. So that's what the athletic pack is for. The digestion pack, the brain and heart pack. If you don't want a brain attack or a heart attack, that's what Dr. Wallace put that pack together for. So figure out which pack you want. These people all lost this amount of weight in six months, which is phenomenal. Take the challenge, set a goal, choose your path. You're going to have a story to tell everybody. Everybody. That story I told you this, this evening, how many thought that was a, an amazing story? Did you like that story? Yeah? You didn't like my story? You didn't raise your hand. Like, wow, what, what, what did I leave out of my story? Did you like my story? <laughs> So then you're going to tell everybody, you've got to have a story. You won't get into longevity until longevity gets into you. So that's the deal. Now, I told you we're going to flip over the coin. If I told you that I had a winning lottery in my lottery ticket in my pocket, just pretend, I call it the phone, just pretend <laughs> that this is a lottery ticket. Right here in Kansas City, I went down and got your mega bucks deal. The jackpot is $65 billion. So we have a player. <laughs> <laughs> See, you'll never win the lottery unless you play. At least you know, I'd be rooting for you. <laughs> I know you. So it's two hundred and three million dollars. By anybody's stretches, that's a lot of money. And so for five bucks, you can go get a ticket. For a dollar, you can go get a ticket. You can buy a whole bunch of them for a hundred bucks, and people play that. Why don't they play this as seriously as they play the lottery? I often wonder that. Why don't people think that this has a lot more merit or a lot bigger chance because they're willing to bet on something else and people that play the lottery are not willing to bet on themselves? Why? Sorry, I know I just like offended half of you. If you play the lottery, you're betting on something external. Why not look inside and say, I believe in me. I'm going to bet on me. I'm better than a lottery ticket. And you are better than a lottery ticket because it's a choice. You can choose to have the results that we're going to talk about tonight. You can choose to have this life and lifestyle. You can choose to not be great. You can choose to be extraordinary. And how many, if, if, I, if, if I told you for a fact this is the winning lottery ticket for that $203 million, I just happen to have insight. All you have to do is scratch it. How many of you would scratch it off? How many of you would scratch this if you knew that this was the winning lottery?
lottery ticket and there was $203 million behind it? Yep. Tell me you're going to raise your hand. (laughs) 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 So she's going to scratch that off. I'm telling you that longevity is a winning lottery ticket. I'm telling you that if you will do what we're talking about, you will win. And so there's no room for skepticism. There's no room for what if this doesn't work. No, it works. You have to play the lottery if you want to win. You have to play longevity if you want to win. It's a guarantee to change your life, physically and financially. You just have to play. Skepticism, forget about it. You can be skeptical if that was the winning lottery ticket, too. The question isn't, is it the winner? The question is, will you play? So the question is, will you play longevity? Dr. Wallach's an old man. He's 75 years old, and he still lectures 300 days a year. You think he's old because of his age? He's not old based on his actions. Not even close. So come out and play. If this was all screwed up and messed up, he wouldn't be 75 years old living to talk about what we're talking about. He'd be in the slammer and labeled as a quackadoodle and shown scientifically with all the evidence in the world that he was a phony. Instead, he's in the Smithsonian. Instead, he has saved so many countless lives, they're not able to shut him up. He goes and he sues the FDA seven times. If you're a wackadoodle, you don't live to tell about that and get a victory at the end of your name for suing the FDA. And he has one of those. Go look it up. Fact check it. He's a real deal. He's the real McCoy. You can stand tall. You can stand proud with your shoulders back. You can walk around with confidence and know that you are in the right place at the right time. So thank your lucky stars. Thank the good Lord above. Thank whatever you want to thank. All I know is that this is not a joke. And it's not a joke for me. People don't laugh at me anymore. They see where I live. They see what I drive. They see where my kids go to school. They see the lifestyle. They see me traveling all over the world and doing it with good friends like Dave Pitcock and my good buddy Chance Pitcock in the back of the room. This is the Gen Y team. All you guys that came in tonight off of social media, this is the Generation Y movement. And it is taking over by storm. It is that F5 tornado, and you just have to engage. So what I'm going to tell you, the reason I pause right here, is because I'm going to tell you exactly right now how to be the biggest winner of longevity that you could imagine there being in the history of this company. It's real simple. I'm going to tell you what to do, and then you're going to go, well, I don't know. I just have to think about it. I have to pray about it. Haven't you already been praying, or are you going to start praying now for the first time in your life? How did you get here in the first place? Somebody tapped you on the shoulder and said, hey, I've been thinking about you. Hey, I've been thinking about you too. Hey, I've been thinking, you're on my mind. I know where I'm going. I'm inviting you to come with me where I've already been. I'm not going on an experimental adventure project down some nature trail. I've been up and down the trail so many times, I can walk the trail blindfolded. There are rattlesnakes out there. There are crocodiles. There's man-eating tigers and boa constrictors. If you don't know where they are, you might get hurt. Why don't you tag along with me? I know where all of them are. I can get you there safely. Does that make sense? So you can go through life taking a chance, or you can reduce your risk by saying, you've been up and down the trail how many times? Yeah, that's good enough for me. Dr. Wallach's been up and down this trail so many times, it's good enough for me. People like Dave Pitcock have been up and down this financial trail so many times, it's good enough for me. So let's all agree to get off of our high and mighty pious pedestal that says, I'm a researcher. I've got to go talk to my people. So your people are different than all the other people that are already intelligent? That's the kind of people you have? See? Those things don't make sense. So I'm telling you, I'm going to spend five minutes now sharing with you exactly what to do. If you take my advice, you're holding the lottery ticket. If you don't take my advice, you will know that you held the lottery ticket, and that's all you did. It was valueless to you. So here it is. For you to make money in this company, you must have a CEO mega pack. That's a picture of a CEO mega pack. This is not a mystery. That's what it is. It has a wholesale value of $500. That's nothing. I don't care if you're broke. Like by all the, I don't care if you have one penny in your bank account. That's not very much money. Because remember, you can look at a problem and you can say, 
I'm a victim, I have a penny. Or you can say, are you kidding me? I have a penny and it's only 500 bucks? That's not a very far journey to go to. If you were desperate, if you were, this is probably a horrible example. If you were addicted to Oxycontin like I was, and you had to have your next fix like I did, and it was gonna cost 500 bucks, I found a way to get it. Does that make sense? When you need something badly enough, like your next breath of air, do me a favor, experiment. No one's gonna get hurt, no one's gonna die. Just trust the process. Everybody hold their breath. Hold your breath. Raise your hand if you're holding your breath, so I know you're holding your breath. Okay, good. Everybody holding their breath? Okay. Now breathe. Okay. Did it feel good to take your next breath? Yeah. It felt good, didn't it? Yeah. And why did you take that breath? I could have told you to do a lot of things and you wouldn't have done it. So why did you take the breath? Thank you. I get the answer. You had to take the next breath. I just didn't make you get desperate for it. However, the longer you held your breath, if you didn't believe that you needed it when I told you to breathe, you would have believed it within about the next 20 or 30 seconds. You'd have been like turning purple and okay, wow, thank you, finally. See, when you need success in your life, like your next breath, When you need a change in your circumstances as badly as you do your next breath, it happens. And most people don't admit that they're that desperate for a change because they just think they're like, I've got this figured out. I'll do it my way. There's a song called I'll, I Did It My Way. Who sang that song? Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. I Did It My Way. That's not necessarily a motto that you want to go through life living up to that you did it your way. It's only bragging rights. It doesn't make you a hero. So the way to do this is to get a CEO mega pack. They're $500. You end up with $500 of wholesale products. Why these products? Because you can see the picture here. There's two pictures of, this, of the uh, 90 essential nutrients. There's one for you and one for your kids. There's one for you and one for your significant other. There's one for you and one for you again next month. It's 60 days of 90 essential nutrients unless, there's a caveat, unless you have a major health issue going on right now. If you're already hurting and something significant is going on with you, then I know pretty sure that you need to double up on those 90 essential nutrients. So taking two of them in a month, that's not unheard of. I took two and a half to three in a month. When I was going through my issue, I was a hurt loose puppy. I was a hurt unit. I had to put that amount of nutrition into my system. I have a friend of mine that had stage four renal cell carcinoma, Brian Baum, mayor of Longmont, Colorado. He, he was given 30 days to live. I hang out with him multiple times in a week. I talk to him multiple times in a week. It's been over two years. I'm doing pretty good. Radio show five days a week. I like him. <coughs> CEO, major hospital, glaucoma, macular degeneration. All he could see was a black circle tunnel, Coke bottle glasses. Didn't have, he was legally blind. We had a throwing away his glasses party after nine months of taking the 90 essential nutrients, and he ended up with 20-20 vision and no more dark circle of macular degeneration and glaucoma. Is that exciting? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I, people get excited about that stuff. So whether you're talking about cancer or vision or sore knees or bones or joints or people not able to get pregnant, here's another one. I could tell you lots of stories about people that over and over and over again, they were just disappointed because either they weren't giving birth to a live baby, so um, what's that called? Miscarriage. miscarriage, thank you. So they were having miscarriages, miscarriages, or they just weren't getting pregnant. Nothing was working out. Those 90 essential nutrients, that is an unbelievable fertility solution. Absolutely. People get pregnant. So it's amazing stuff. You have to have a CEO pack. There's energy, there's antioxidants, there is the 90 essential nutrients in a stick pack. That's what's in this bottle right here. You've got the canisters with the 90 essential nutrients. There's rebound, that's what Chance takes when he's done working out. There's a weight loss product up there, and that allows you to have access to every single bonus and commission that our company pays out. Don't leave money on the table. I don't like doing that. So make sure you're getting paid for everything. We want to pay for your transportation. The car bonus is crazy exciting. Chance has the car bonus. You should see the car he drives. It's ridiculous. It's fun. It's cool. And when you're 19 years old like him, and you get to drive something like he gets to drive, and it's paid for by the company, that's pretty cool. 
I just picked up a $112,000 Mercedes-Benz S550 paid for by the company. That's a pretty sweet ride. I don't care whether you like Mercedes or not, that's a sweet car. So it does some pretty amazing things, like it's got a back massager. I can drive down the road and I'm getting my whole back off. Oh, it feels <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to get too close to over there. <laughs> they don't know why I'm so happy in my car. I don't even want to get out of it. It feels better than my living room furniture. It feels so I go around corners and the sides of my seat go, and they hug me. So when I'm lonely, I just drive faster and go sharper around corners because the sharper I turn the car around corners, it just squeezes tighter. So people wonder why I'm like all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I need big hugs. So it just squeezes me tighter. So that's a pretty cool car. If I need more dollars, I just push the vibrator. This is great. Yep, that's my car. So I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. You know, longevity will take care of that payment for you. Stock options. This is how people create wealth. You can get over 200,000 shares of stock options in the company just for rank advancing. And we'll show you how to do that. Dave and I are like Sherpas. Sherpas are the people you hire when you want to safely get to the top of Mount Everest. And we've been up and down this mountain a few times. We help people go up and down this mountain to success. And we came back for you because you said, pick me. And we know exactly how to get you up there. And so as we help you rank advance and climb Mount Everest, you get stock options. Stock options are awesome. They're like 21 cents a share right now. I can tell you for sure as the sun rises, it's not going to hang out at 21 cents. We're growing through the roof right now. My best guess, and I've been doing this for 26 years, it'll be in the dollars, dollars in the next several years, dollars. I don't know if it's $3 or $5 or $10, it's going to be dollars. And when it does, and you've got all these shares for 21, 25, 30, 40, 50 cents, and it goes to $5 a share or $10 a share, you just made a lot of money. And you don't even have to write a check to pay for it. They'll just give you the difference of what they're valued at when you got them versus the valuation in the future. <coughs> that creates wealth, just like that. Stock options, infinity bonuses. We don't leave any money on the table. Here's, I'm gonna show you something cool. Here's how you get your money back in like two weeks. You wanna get your 500 bucks back in two weeks? This is what you do. You say, all right, I'm the CEO of Fortune 500 company and I need some help. I'm not gonna build a multi-million dollar business by myself. Nobody ever did anything alone, it takes a team. So you have to think about surrounding yourself with people that are hurting, that want to feel good, that want to change their circumstances, that want to be led up a mountain to success, that are tired of being where they're at, they're sick and tired of being tired, they're ready to go from good to great to great to extraordinary, whatever terms you want to use. Think of a half a dozen people, just a half a dozen. Simple enough, if you had a birthday party, I guarantee you could think of six people to come to your birthday party. It just happens to be that all six of the people that would come to your party are exactly the people that you need to tell about this business. And the people that you would invite to anything else going on, a bar mitzvah, a baptism, a christening, a birthday party, a funeral, a wedding, all of those people need to know about this. We're just not asking you to go get all those people, just pick six. Just six. That's it. And some will go, wow, I don't know, six is a lot of people. Seriously? <laughs> that is like the biggest joke I've ever heard of. Life. We're talking about a life-threatening situation, and you want to make a big deal about this. It's not a big deal. Hurry up already. Go tap six people on the shoulder, and here's what you say. I'm even going to help you with this. And just tell them simply, you know what? I met some extraordinary people tonight. There was a guy named Dave that looked like he was pretty simple. He wrote bowls for a living when he was a younger man. Fell off, broke his leg got arrested for writing a hot check, spent some time in jail for diapers and baby clothing. I met that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then some guy got up and talked about sperm floating through the cabin and finding its way to an egg. And all I can tell you is the sperm guy is a bull guy. And they're just amazing people. You've got to meet these guys. And they're going to go, well, gee, I never met a, a, a guy that got arrested for riding bulls, and I never met a guy that liked talking about sperm before. So let's, let's go talk to these people. You see, if you make light out of stuff and you have fun versus getting all serious, here's serious, opposite end of the spectrum. So I, I, I went to a thing and I, I saw this deal. And it was like a really amazing deal. And they drew some circles on the whiteboard 
and they talked about how people are broke and they're getting rich and they're sucking down all these minerals and things. They're healing 900 diseases. And some guy that's been like 75 years old, he, he looks old, however, he's like speaking all over the world, and we're going to get rich. And we're going to take us up Mount Everest. And they said they're going to be Sherpas, so when we really go <laughs> climb the mountain, we're probably not going to die. So I think you might be interested in that. <laughs> as silly as that sounds, that's how you sound to other people when you make this complicated. And then they go, this sounds like one of those things. Yeah, it's one of those placadoodle things that people don't ever figure out how to talk about appropriately. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I hope you get what I'm saying. Do not complicate this. Don't, if, if you act weird or sound weird, it's weird. If you invite me to anything and you sound weird, I don't want to go. I don't care if you invite me to a picnic. I don't care if you invite me to go play one-on-one -on -one 21 basketball with you. If you act like a nutcase, I don't want to do it. <laughs> so don't treat this like a nutcase project. It's not a nutcase project. We're saving lives. We're putting money in people's bank accounts. We're changing the world one person at a time. And we don't need you. We need somebody. So just decide that you're the body that we need. Because it's a decision. It really is. And it's that simple. At the end of the day, it's that simple. It's 500 bucks to change your future. What do you get for it? Nutrition that could save your life or prevent you from having a life-altering, unhappy misfortune from a health standpoint. That's what that is. And it's tubes that you can give out to people and say, here, drink this rebound. Tell me how you feel in 10 minutes. Have this pollen burst. And come back and tell me at your break at work tomorrow if you don't feel better by noon. It's stuff like that. That gets people's attention. And I literally did this. When Dave came to town to talk, See, we, we trade off. I come here and he comes out to Colorado. We trade off. When he comes to my town, I go tell everybody. I go, you're not going to believe this. An extremely close friend of mine, somebody that I have the highest level of respect for, a guy that's moved more mountains than people I know, people that's impacted more lives. He has had a bigger impact on my health and an unbelievable impact on my bank account. I'd like for you to meet him. And you know what they're going to say? That sounds like a pretty extraordinary person to me. When do I get to meet him? Well, let me see what I can do. How's tomorrow night at 7? How's tomorrow in the afternoon at 1 o'clock? Let me see if I can put you on the phone with him before he gets here. It's just stuff like that. People want to meet extraordinary people, period. That's what they want to do. Do you agree with that, mate? They want to meet extraordinary people. I mean, if, think of your favorite hero in life. Do you know who um, Kobe Bryant is? If I was going to have dinner with him, if I was going to have dinner with him right here, what's it called? Something rib crib. And I said, I've got him here. He's just waiting for us to finish. Why don't you come have dinner with me? I'm going to introduce you to Kobe Bryant. Would you turn me down? Why? Why wouldn't you turn me down? Because he's Kobe Bryant. And who is Kobe Bryant? Okay, keep going. NBA, what about him? That doesn't mean anything. He plays in the NBA. Keep going. Superstar. Superstar NBA player. Keep going. Three-time MVP. Keep going. Five rings. Thank you. He's got five <coughs> championship rings. <coughs> Only a few people have more rings than that guy has. He's got five of them. And he's not done yet. Now that's a guy that might be worthy to go sit down with. Yeah, he's made some mistakes. Remember, you can find the fault in anything you want to. Check this out. You could have said, and I heard somebody say it, wife something, cheater. You can go down that path. You can find fault in anything you want to. It's what you choose to get out of the situation. Maine chose to look at all the positive things, which was going to make his experience of meeting him incredible. If he was programmed with, oh, he's, I'm, I'm making stuff, I don't know his personal life. He's a wife beater. He's He's, uh, you know, he's a cheater. He sleeps with all these people. He's, you know, he's really shady off the court. He's, you know, he's been caught doing this or that. And now it's like, well, who wants to meet a guy like that? Well, I mean, guess what? If we filleted all of us, we'd find fault in every single person in this room, would we not? Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So you find the best in people, and you build them up, and you focus on the positive things because we're looking to extract out of people what they have to give, not what they have to take. And Dave's one of the biggest givers in the world that I've ever met. That's why he is who he is. That's why he is where he is. Think about that. So that's what we do. We take these people and we say four people. 
They want to change their circumstances. It doesn't matter who they are. Just go pick them. Introduce them to somebody in the company because we do this presentation around here every week. Plug into it. Bring your people. Don't tell them anything because we'll tell them for you. If you start telling them, then you might as well be the expert and do the meeting yourself, and then your ratios are going to be different. They'll say no to you because you don't have the results. They'll say no to you because you're not an expert on that topic. Bring them to the expert. These four people are going to result in you earning $130 times four. She's number four. One, two, three, four, that's 520 bucks. A CEO pack is how much? 500 bucks. $499.99. $500, you're going to get back $520 with introducing four people. And then you're going to help them get their money back by introducing four people. And residual income kicks in. Watch this. Here's your four people. Four people right here. And, and uh, let me deprogram or handle an objection right now. This is one of those multi-level things. Of course it's multi-level. Tell me something in the world that isn't multi-level. Everything's multi-level. Your government is multi-level, and you vote for that. <laughs> so everything's multi-level. Your job is multi-level. You've got a CEO of a company. You've got vice presidents of a company. You've got regional managers, district managers. And at the very bottom, you have employees that could be here today and gone tomorrow. Here they are. The difference is, in corporate America, money flows this direction, and the top makes all the money. In network marketing, the money flows this way, and anybody here can make more money than that person up there. Just ask me and Dave. Dave and I are in the top 50 income earners in longevity, as far as I know. The top 50 income earners. We arrived on the scene three years ago. 18-year-old company, and in three years, we surpassed, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people. It's because we didn't wait in line. 18 years old, we came in somewhere down here. We didn't move up, we stayed here, and we out-earned all these people. Right, Dave? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what's going on. So it doesn't matter where you are here. The point is, is that we're going to start here with you, wherever you are, and there's your residual. Four people consuming. That says 150 bucks in the upper right-hand corner because the average order in the company with over 1,000 products, not three, over 1,000 is 150 bucks a month. Your residual on that's 40, 50 bucks a month. And then we're going to add to it another 200 for 250 bucks because these four want their money back, so they each introduce four, and they got their money back, and the cycle continues, and month after month after month, these people have shifted where they shop. Barb Pitcock says it best. Just show people the value of over 1,000 products. I mean, the diversity in our product lines is extraordinary. Shift where you shop. Take your anyway money. It's not an expense. It's already in your budget. You're going to go spend the money somewhere. Just spend it through your company so you can get rich. Right. Period. It's that simple. There's nothing more to the story. We can all go home now. <laughs> 5,500 people, look at the residual income, over $60,000 a month. The reason Dave makes more than $60,000 a month is because he has people that exceed 5,500 in this example. That's why he makes more than $60,000 a month. I make... A lot of money, too. I'm not going to quote incomes from the front of the room. I'm not built to do that. So I can just tell you that this is an exciting chart, and um, I can tell his story. I'm not able to tell my own from the front of the room. Does that make sense? Okay. So just read between the lines. Dave and I work together, and uh, this is a great pay plan. It's super exciting, and that's how that works. There's over 10 ways we get paid. I've told you about most of them except for this one. This is our coding bonus every month. People come into our company, and they get CEO packs. Depending on the title that you are, and you can see there's seven of them here, you might be here just getting started, or maybe you've been around you know, building a business for a few couple, two or three months like Chance Pitcock, and, and he just became a vice presidential marketing director. We'll have him share a story in a second. Every time somebody enters his team, the coding bonus says that based on your title and the number of people coming into your team, doesn't matter whether you introduce them or somebody else did, if they enter your team with a CEO pack, if you're a vice presidential like Chance, you get 140 bucks. If 10 people came into your organization and you're a vice presidential, that's $1,400. Got it? If 20 people came in, that's 2,800. If 100 people came in, that would be $14,000. Make sense? Hundreds of people come in every month to organizations like Dave. I don't care, pick a number. He's not here, he's here. Just say it with one of these numbers so we're dumbing these things down. Hundreds of people coming in at these numbers, 
Those are big, huge, monthly, weekly coding bonus checks on top of the other checks that I already told you about. It's simple to get wealthy when you know what you're doing and you have the right hand holding and you just stay in the lane and follow the system. It's just time. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Two years. Give this two years. Two years is going to go by just like that. In two years, it'll be the blink of an eye. And if you don't do something different than you came in here doing tonight, your life will look pretty much identical to what you have today. And if you followed Robin, if you followed Dave, if you followed Chance around, if you followed Diana around, and some of these other people here that I've just gotten to know that are in the company, which is great because our company is that big. We can actually meet people. I've met you once before, right, Bonnie? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, and, and others, just follow them. They're on a quest. They know what they're doing. You're going to win. You're the winner. You've got the winning lottery ticket. Do the math on this, guys. It's incredible. Are you next? There's a picture of Dave and his wife, Barb, right here. You know, at the time, they lived in this unbelievable home. They have an unbelievable house now. They have a different one. That picture was an unbelievable home, like 11,000 square feet. Cars being paid for. Are you next? There's a picture of my wife and I in the upper right-hand corner. We don't have that car anymore. We have another one that I just told you about. And this is the person that I met in the coffee shop. In fact, it was my answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. And that guy is an unbelievable person. Um, I have so much appreciation for Tom Chanel. Andre Vaughn is another guy. He lives out on the East Coast. His goal, here's his goal. He's working on it so diligently, it's crazy. He is going to buy the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> That's what he's doing. If you saw the crib that he lives in, it's ridiculous. It's, an, it's a compound estate. Acres. Chance has been to his house. It's acres of land. Trees. Long driveway on his private property, all paved into his crazy crib. That's what it is. It's a crazy <laughs> crib. I don't have any other word to describe it. A gate. you got to push the button. Please let me in. Broad iron gate that's taller than you can reach, opens up. Please come through. Did I do this or did I not? <laughs> Drive up this driveway, you get in there, swimming pool, basketball courts, miniature golf, balconies, decks, thousands of square feet in his house, guest quarters. It's crazy. He builds longevity full time. That's pretty exciting. And he's going to buy the Baltimore Ravens. That's what he's speaking, and it's going to come to pass because he wants it. That's his dream and his goal. We recognize people in so many ways. I mean, people say all the time, you know, how do you get that ring? How do you get the one that's on Dave's hand? You get these rings by being million-dollar earners in the company. And we say thank you through bling. We do it through jackets. We do it through pins. We do it through featuring people in magazines. And we send people on vacations. We give them cash. We give them blazers, I, and it, if, if that doesn't reach somebody, I don't know what else there is to do, because that's about every way imaginable to say thank you. <coughs> Here's our cast. This is the people that run the company. We talk a lot about field leadership. This is our corporate leadership. Steve Wallach is the son of Dr. Wallach. You think he has something to uphold? That's his family name. This is Bill Andrilli. He's the president. He's the most brilliant, creative, open-minded, out-of-the-box thinking president I could ever imagine running a company, and it was after... He came to Longevity. After he came to Longevity, that we went from being a $38 million a year company to being a $130 million a year company after he came on board. Keep that in mind. He created the 90 for Life message and motto and mantra and that whole slogan that's so catchy today. Uh, Michelle Wallach is Steve's wife. Mike Randolph, Executive Vice President. Patty Gardner, VP of Sales. Um, Rick Cloward, Marketing. And Sanjeev Javia. He's an incredible guy. His roommate in college was Tom Brady, quarterback for the New England Patriots. Whether you like that team or not, that's a pretty killer quarterback. This is a picture at the time it was taken of so many people that are holding up checks because they made over a million dollars of income in the company. And just keep this in mind. We just want to know, are you next? And I, I'm done. I'm going to leave you with four things to go home with tonight. Number one, do this. And do this by starting with a dream. Write down your reason for why you would do this. Don't write your reason down for why you wouldn't do this. Write down your reason for why you will build this company. Write it down. Because you come up with any number of excuses, just like you can find fault with Mother Teresa, you can find a reason to not build longevity. Whether you do or don't, we're moving on. We're the only ones laughing. You won't be laughing. Two years from now, you're going to go, dang, I went to the Comfort Inn and Suites. Some... Pretty excited guy. Talked about being a $130 million company. Now they're like a $400 million. What would have happened for me and my family and my legacy 
had I started when they were doing 130 million. That's what you need to be thinking. And the time is now. The time is right now. Write down your dream. Why will you do this? Number two, write out your list. Like if you could only pick six people on the planet, who would they be? Six. Number three, register. We have laptops in this room. We have apps on phones, because that's the day and age we live in, is we have cell phones with apps on them. And push the button that says <laughs> Longevity app on your iPhone. And push it, and then fill it out. And start. Put in your credit card for $499, plus tax and shipping is $554. Put it in, and move. Three or four business days from now, a box is going to show up on your doorstep, and you're going to go, I knew it. <laughs> there it is. And there's your CEO pack. And inside is your 90 essential nutrients and the picture that there's not going to be any surprise and will be exactly as I described it with some other materials and literature in there. And you're going to go, whoa, that little box is going to turn into something not great, extraordinary. And it only cost me 500 bucks. And I just told you how to get your money back. And I just showed you how you make a bloody fortune over time. And I just showed you the most conservative most conservative plan in the whole world, right over there. Does it have to go that slow? I mean, if you need more than $10,000 in your first year, can you do it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I worked with a guy last month, meaning the month of October. He was a kickboxing, martial arts, jujitsu, taekwondo instructor. I think they do stuff like that. <laughs> and I don't know, I've never done it. It's fine. It's something like that. And Last month, he made 1500 bucks his first month in the company. His first month, 1500 bucks. This, guy, this guy's busy. And then I worked with another guy. Dave was there when I met him. His name is Claudio Moreno. He was the Cracker Barrel manager in Thornton, Colorado, where we happened to go walking into. And he asked me how our meal was, how the day was going. I went up to pay for the bill. We started a little conversation. I said, are you happy doing what you're doing, or are you looking for something? He goes, I'm looking for something. Glad you asked. I met him two days later. His first month was September. He became a senior executive marketing director his first 30 days in the company. He's now car qualified. His first 30 days, he made 1250 bucks. I don't know. What's your story? So get your CEO pack. You have to make money. Borrow it. Pay it back. It's a good reason to do it. You take out student loans for no guarantee. Why not go borrow money to get your CEO pack for the closest thing to a guarantee that exists? You couldn't fail. The only way you'll fail is if you don't listen to Dave and other people that know what they're doing. The Sherpas. Number four is plug in. Last thing I have to say is just plug in. Find a way to plug in. We have conference calls. We have webinars. We meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. We do this meeting on a weekly basis. We have regional activities. We have corporate activities. We meet in people's homes, we meet in hotel rooms, we do whatever it takes to get the word out about what we're doing at Longevity, and there's no way you can be disconnected unless you just do this and go la 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 and just don't pay attention, and you shut down and close us out. We're coming to you. Pull open your phone, and people, I'm live right now. This is broadcasting all over creation right now. I don't know if there's 10,000 people watching and listening. I don't know if there's 1,000. I know it's a lot of people right now are watching live, and little did you know, that as big as this room is right now with 40 or 50 people in here, there is a ton of people that are watching all over the world. Bermuda, Barbados, Mexico, the Philippines, Japan. They're watching. I don't know how many. That's a lot of countries. There's people watching right now. Hello. Good to see you guys. I haven't even acknowledged you guys. I'm so glad that you tuned in tonight. Welcome. So we just talked to them now. You're not even the beginning of how exciting this thing is. We're a Mack truck and a freight train. Just get in the way of it, and you're going to head that direction. So plug in. It's easy to do. Register tonight. I'm begging you and imploring you. Do not walk out this door without registering in this company and saying, I'm in. i got nothing to lose. I have everything to gain, and I have people that are betting on me. If you don't like what we're doing, send your products back. We'll give you a refund. That's how confident we are. You have no way to lose. That's a winning lottery ticket right there. If you don't like what you're doing, if it doesn't feel right to you after 30 days, send your product back. That's about as nice as it gets, true or false. Yeah, you buy a car, you don't get to give it back in a month. You bought the car. You bought clothing after a month and you've worn it and washed it, 
you know, unless you got a nice store, man, I'm talking to the guy that, that runs a big retail store in town. You know, unless you got a nice manager. You can plug the name. I'm not you, Old Navy. Oh, this, yeah. guy, <laughs> this guy is a veteran, and he runs and operates the Old Navy store off of the 119th and I-35. Correct. See, I'm not even from around here. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for coming out, guys. I'm going to turn the time back over for just a few minutes to Dave, and I know we've got some extraordinary people in this room that we want to say thank you to, and uh, Janice Titcock and Aiden, why don't you guys make your way up to the front of the room right here, and uh, I'll just turn it back over to you. Thanks a lot, Dave. All right. Awesome. Thank you. sitting in front of the Old Navy before we met David, and uh, a gentleman called from the corporate office, and uh, his name was Dan, and he's a video guy, and he was interviewing Scott Bardulis about why he's so passionate about this business and talking about his family, and the guy had been in the industry of network marketing forever. He came over with the Heritage Makers, and he said, I've been in this industry for 40-some years, and I have never in my life met more real people than in any other company. So there are no egos. There's nothing. They're, the top leaders in the company are the most real people in the world, and all they do is want you to make money and succeed. Mm -hmm. And he was talking you know, directly to Scott, and I just, uh, that's so true. That's, that's what we have in this program. But uh, all the, any of the SEMDs, uh, jump up here real quick. I just love everybody to meet the uh, leaders in the area. Just quick introduction of yourselves and what's going on. Do you guys want to keep weekly meetings going here yes. and just crank this baby? Yeah. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, during uh, the first part of Scott's presentation, I went to the uh, front desk and I booked this hotel for the next two straight weeks. Uh, Thursday nights, just like tonight. Next week, I believe Chance and Cameron and Hayden and the Gen Y crew are going to come here and uh, do a presentation. Sound good? Yeah. And then the week after, Thursday after, um, I'm going to fly in from Milwaukee and I'm going to do a meeting the Thursday after. So I really encourage you guys to uh, use that. Utilize those meetings and promote them and say, dude, come with me. I don't want to. Come anyway. No, I really don't want to. Get in my car. I mean, that just, you know what I mean? Because you have that feeling. You know, the only way you get that feeling is by being here. Does that make sense? I mean, how many times have people talk to you about something and it's like out of sight, out of mind in 30 seconds? But when you leave here, it's different. You know what I mean? It's like they're a part of it. So uh, the next couple weeks, Thursday night, 7 o'clock here, Promote it, let's pack the room. Standing room only, let's make them line it down the halls. Agree? Yep. All right, why don't you guys just introduce yourself real quick and why you're so excited, and we'll wrap this baby up. I'm just going to start. Let's okay. You got to start. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm Doug Lodge from the Independence Area here, and about three years ago I had like five way bypass surgery, and about a year after that I was pretty much, I thought I was, I wouldn't fit, wouldn't fit in the grave. And, I just heard Dr. Wallach on the radio so many times, I just got online and ordered stuff. And and so, um, I, I, after a couple of months, I was off my meds and I was I was back living again. And so, uh, people that I know just uh, knew I've changed. And so, uh, I got some key people involved. And so, my organization grew and I became an SMD pretty quickly. I've been going kind of sideways for since then. And uh, at last convention, I, I learned about the TikToks and just uh, their concern for helping people with wealth too, besides their health. And so I really appreciate them and, and, and being able to share their, their training. And so I'm really on board now and uh, can share the, the business opportunities with people besides their own health and just changing their lives with this program. Sweet. I'm Diana Whittington. I'm in Kansas City, Kansas. And I started with Lavinity with yeah, David yeah. from Barnes original company and right before they were given the longevity and it was an answer to prayer I had been praying for a, my husband um, passed away 11 years ago and I was receiving a um, workman's comp payment for that and I'm a teacher so I don't make any money and so I you know you get grow accustomed to a, an income coming in and that was coming to an end and so I had been praying for God to show me a way to you know bring some more income in and I have my granddaughter that I adopted, and my grown kids, you know, take care of them. So anyway, um, long story short, right after, I was praying, and a call, my phone rang, and I answered it. It was a guy from our church who said, hey, Diana, I'm in this thing. Are you interested? And I said, yes, <laughs> nice. yeah. And I 
just lined up right then for ten dollars. <laughs> Went to a meeting at uh, the Martin Willie Martin's house and met Dave and Barb right after that. And so I signed up for the CEO right after that. Went to the convention and was blown away and learned about um, you know Dr. Wallach and everything. And, and the amazing thing too is my daughter what had been suffering debilitating migraines. I mean, to where I was worried about her being in labor. She mm. was that bad. I mean, she was you know, wow. she couldn't take care of her boys. She was in pain all the time. And started on the products and immediate results. It was amazing. Mm. It's changed my life. Incredible. It's changed her life. Story. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm Chance Bigbug. First of all, I think we should all give it up for uh, Scott and Mark. Yeah. yeah. to have them guys out here. They, they have very busy, busy schedules and it's hard to catch them, but uh, thank you to y'all. I'm, I'm Chance Pickcock. I'm 19. I'm from Roswell, Kansas. I was playing football at Kansas State last year. Uh, my parents have been involved with something like this my whole life. They provided for me. Um, they paved the way for me. They put me in front of people like Scott and uh, in, in the middle of the summer, I wasn't in the best place. Uh, after I played football at K-State, didn't know where I was going with my life, but a lot like uh, some of the college kids in the room, people my age, uh, a bunch of adults who I didn't know where they were going, but uh, I, was at this, I was at this convention in Baltimore with my mom. I've been around this my whole life, and something finally clicked for me once I kind of got away from sports, and I decided to bring young back to longevity, uh, got some things rolling with some people. Uh, Generation-wise, our movement, I started with, uh, Hayden was one of the first guys that got, got on with me. I built him up to SEMD, uh, along with some others. I actually was vice presidential this week, which was one of my goals. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this has taken off every week. It's getting bigger out here. Uh, Wonderful. I'm excited. I'm excited for the future, and I'm here to talk with any of y'all out here that can get rolling. Nice. Uh, my name is Dave Hutchison. I actually just hit SMD yesterday. Um, I, uh, I was one of the first guys to get involved with Chance in this new Generation Y movement. And, um, you know, like, like he said, he didn't have much going on. Same boat. I really didn't have much purpose going on in my life. Um, he brought this new opportunity in front of me, and I just I went out of full throttle, and it was the best decision I've ever made. Um, you know, I really, I see the big picture of being around Dave and Barb and just going to Colorado, seeing Scott and his family, and it's all right there. Like they said, been up in the mountains several times. I want to go with them up one of these times on that mountain. <laughs> if you just plug in the sources, it's going to happen, so. Awesome, awesome. Hi, I'm Robin Shields, and uh, I live in Oklahoma, Mark. I'm at the uh, SEMD Baltimore Convention. I'm not a chance for not here to tell you. <laughs> Just older. Yeah, right? And I've spent my life in corporate America, and um, you know, I gave up a lot of my life to get a lot of these things. <coughs> Got to a point in my life where I didn't want to do that anymore. So I'm excited about getting my life back, having my time, and I'm really excited about the Gen Y movement. I have a 21 year old, so who knows what could happen with that? That's pretty exciting, and I'm really excited to see Kansas City. Growth. We've got such a great opportunity here in this area. Oh, wow. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, thanks, everyone. Awesome, awesome. Uh, give you guys a um, Next, uh, there's a lot of meetings going on everywhere. And there's a lot of ways and places you can find out that stuff. Um, I know this coming Monday, I'll be in Hayes. And I'm just kind of talking locally. We're all kind of from, I know that's not local. It's local for me because I drive home. So it's local. Um, but I know Monday night we'll be in Hayes. Um, next week, I know the following week we'll be in Salina. We'll be uh, uh, actually we'll have to Milwaukee. We'll be back here. There's a lot of stuff going on. I know Cardoz, Cardoz is everywhere. Um, I know Chance and his crew are. I mean, they'll leave here tonight. They'll be up till two in the morning doing meetings. I mean, they're just they're just there's always something going on. Is is my point. Um, so you can always plug into something. But getting plugged in. And getting your new people plugged in, I think is the most important thing you can do in this business. It's the only reason I'm here today. It's the only reason I got in. It's the only reason I knew what it was. It's the only way I knew what to do next. Does that make sense? A lot of people get in this and it's just, they're just a statistic. Because they don't know what to do. And that's not what we do in this business. I mean, our goal is to just really almost slap you upside the head.
and say, oh, this is what we'll need to do. So then you, like Scott said, we've been doing this for two or three years, and we blow past every single person in the company. That's not by accident. It's by doing the right things. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you, you've seen Fardulis' presentation. Wait till you see mine in two weeks. You'll be like, I'm going to stop doing that. <laughs> I'm left-handed, I use a whiteboard, and you can't even read what I write. <laughs> People are like, ha, 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 and then they get in. <laughs> it's, it's working, right? So well, that's enough. But I uh, appreciate you guys. And stick around. Any questions, you guys want to get in and go. Uh, if, if I say paper apps, Chance and, and those guys are like, paper apps, just use the app on your phone. I'm like, app on your phone? All right, I'm going to use the paper app. So we have both here. Use the app on your phone or the paper app. Either one are fine. Uh, but uh, we will uh, see you guys next Thursday. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome.
Yes, sir. 